many of you heard a lot of David, but I'm not quite sure you ever read the Bible. But anyway, possibly you never read it. Uh, you heard a lot of David, especially you grew up from children's meeting. However, even your teachers do not read the Bible. The children meeting teacher possibly just pick up a certain session, make it a story, and speak and tell you a story. Who is this man? Uh, we call him a man who is according to God's heart. This is in Acts 13. The Apostle Paul said, uh, David was a man who was according to God's heart. And also he said, David served his own generation and not slept. You know, brother, this is very puzzling. Is, isn't David a terrible man? Uh, I mean, he can kill somebody, the man who loyal to him, and actually was a mighty man, took over his wife, it's really terrible. But I just can't see how can this man go after God's heart. And yet you have to say he's wonderful. You know why? Because the two comments given by Apostle Paul. Number one, David is a man according to God's heart. And secondly, David was a man served his own generation. These are the greatest achievement a man can ever get. Brother, a man can only be responsible to two things in his life. Number one, how is he related to God? Number two, how is he related to his generation? Confucius, who was a wise man, a great scholar, huh? he made a very famous statement, which is hard for people to understand. Huh? He said, uh, the greatest attainment in human life is that you establish virtue. Tai Shang Li De. And secondly, you, you are very contributive. You offer a lot to your generation. Qi ci li gong. And thirdly, you become a writer. You establish proverbs. Whatever you can do for that generation, that should be very limited. But whatever you can do in writing, that will last for the generations to come. That is, the value will be so high. You know? But uh, God comments on David. It's like the first two statements of Confucius. David, firstly, he was according to God's heart. In other words, spiritually, we would say he's a real spiritual man high, with high virtue. And then secondly, he served his generation. He's very constructive to the generation he was with. And this also point out to two principles. God desires you, a young man, to take care of these two things all your life. This should be your operating, living, your living and operating principle. Number one, you have to be very careful. How are you related to God? Are you a man uh, according to God's heart? It's very different with how much activities you have, how many things you have done. All these may not mean that much overall. If you have all these activities, eventually you, are still, you still have no realization of what is God's heart and live a life firmly with God's heart. You ask for your life. Uh, what, what will be my life? You know, you all have plans, right? I will be an engineer, I will be a physicist, I will be a, a teacher, or I will be an artist, or I will be a musician, uh, I will be an architect, I will be what, what I will be. But God would say this, uh, really all these are irrelevant. You need a living. Because you need a living, you need a trade or profession. You know what I mean? It makes no difference that uh, 
you say I'm a tradesman, I'm a professor. What's the difference? In in America, in this kind of society, or uh, as long as you can make a living, then that's good enough. Yeah, so eventually, young man, as a young man, uh, you should consider your livelihood. So eventually, you know, I only have this golden time for college, three years, four years, two years. Then I will confront the, re the reality of life. At that time, should I or could I have something that uh, make me uh, dignified or decent? That's necessary. Number two, at the time I live on this earth, there's a question comes, what is your focus? You see, I have a professor, I have a profession, I'm an engineer, but eventually, you know what may, may happen? That eventually, that uh, something occupies you to a point, your profession become first, your job become first, or your career become first. And uh, the Lord and the things of the Lord become second. Therefore, here I'll mention two things. Number one is that as a man, you realize uh, you must go according to God's heart. And number two, as a man, you must serve your generation. According to God's heart is your person. Serve your generation is your labor. You must be the right person with the right labor. Your right person calls you to be before God. Your right labor calls you to serve your generation. They are so simple, yet they are so profound. Even Abraham, even Isaac and Jacob, even Moses were not mentioned as much in the New Testament as David. David is the one mentioned the most. And the one who gave most to the Bible, of course, in the Old Testament, number one is Moses. He wrote the Pentateuch, right? Then number two is David. David composed majority of the Psalms, all the 150 Psalms. 50% or more are written by David. Yet, for some reason, when you come to the New Testament, Peter mentioned David, James mentioned David, Paul mentioned David. Seems there's a great servant raised up by the Lord. This very servant of the Lord will use David as part of their ministry. In other words, David has the greatest effects to Israelites and also even to the New Testament age with our Lord Jesus and with great apostles. So, brothers, you ask why? Why he is a man after according to his heart? Why he is a man serving his own generation? Actually, the meaning of David is what? Beloved. His name is Beloved. He was supposed to be loved by everyone, right? Can we tell the Lord these two things? Lord Jesus, I only have one prayer with two items. Number one, I want to be a man according to your heart. Is that hard? Number two, I want to serve my generation. Do you get my point? Don't think these are simple. People either don't do anything or they want to do things for generations. Here, the Lord's comments on a greatest servant he had in the Old Testament is that what? He's a man according to my heart. And he's a man serve his own generation. Once he serves his own generation, the other generations, he has to learn to trust them to God. God's heart desire. And there is a man who is after God's heart. God deposed Saul. He raised up David for them as king. 
to whom also he testified, God testified and said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man according to my heart, and who will do all my will. This is before David's life, before he was anointed. In other words, he was very young, right? A man after God's heart is not that easy to understand. But I want you to make a vow, Lord, I like to be a person after your heart. No matter how messy I am, no matter how terrible I can become, but I, I want to be a person after your heart. I may fail, I may be defeated, I may get myself caught with something uh, very unhealthy. However, Lord, I still want to tell you, I want to be a person after your heart. Then I want to labor. My labor is for my generation. I want to labor to serve my generation. God desires to see a man that can serve his own generation. Now David, having served his own generation by the counsel of God. They both are from Acts 13. So it's the same message. The same, the same message the apostle mentioned uh, David twice. First mention his person that he's after God's heart. Uh, secondly, he is mentioning his labor, his service. He served his own generation. Why? The generation needs someone to serve according to God's heart. Now we have to say the age of darkness. You have to see, even today, what is this? Today is the age of darkness. God has his operations in the Old Testament. God's operation in the Old Testament by three lines. Number one, remember, God has called Abraham. Then out of Abraham, God raised up Moses, right? Establish what? Establish priesthood. So God desires to operate with his people through the priesthood. So God raised up Moses, then God raised up what Aaron, right? Then from here, God hope his people can be properly kept. Then many times the priesthood would fail. So God would raise up kings. Okay, before the king, before David, they do not call king, or before Saul, they call judges, the same thing. God will raise up leaders, the leaders, kings, huh? the leaders who can take care of God's people. Then sometimes huh, the priest fell, then the judges failed. So God always also raised up prophets, priests bring us to the Lord. The king bring God's rule to us. Then the prophets tell us how the Lord move. So basically, huh, we have to realize in the Old Testament, there are only three lines. The line of the priests, the line of the kings, and the line of the prophets. If you desire to be a healthy one before God. You have to be proper with the three lines. You have to be very proper, healthy, with a priest. You have to be very healthy with a king. You have to be very healthy to listen to the word of the prophets. When the three all are very healthy, then I tell you, everything's healthy. Just think about it. when David's kingdom was high, what was healthy? All three are healthy. David as a king, very healthy. David's priest, very healthy. And there's prophet, Nathan. Uh, and Nathan is very healthy. You know, because of the healthiness of the three lines, then the whole Israelites become very healthy. Today, if a church wants to be healthy, if a group of young, young people want to be healthy, if you yourself want to be healthy, you need the three things. Number one, you need to be priest, or at least someone among you should be priest, who is able to bring people to God, who is able to bring God 
to the people. He lives in the Lord's presence. You are exercising a life of being a priest. You have Christ. You have the presence of Christ. You live according to Christ. Eventually, you bring God to man. You are able to bring God to man and bring man to God. That is priest. In the, any local church, when it is healthy, you need good leaders as kings or judges to execute whatever is in the heart of the Lord. They execute God's heart desire. Number one, you need the priesthood. Number two, you need kings. So a healthy local church always have healthy elders. Healthy group of young people always have healthy young people's leaders. Because as long as we're gathering, we not only we need priests, we should be priests. Also, we need kings who are judges who are able to carry us, to take us on. And certainly, we need a prophet. We need a lot of divine speaking. If you come together, there's no speaking. If you come together, there's no word from the Lord. Then you know that something is wrong. When everything becomes healthy, in that healthiness, you must say, uh, there are also uh, divine speaking. When Israelites or when any local church, the principle is the same. Uh, when there's no priestly life, no priesthood, not all the serving, no priestly life, not many are before God. Not many praying for people before God and bring God to people. I tell you, that church life is very weak. When that church life without the king, then I tell you, that church life is very messy. Everyone say whatever is right. Everyone do whatever is right. And when a church life without priests, without the king, and also without a prophet, then I tell you, huh, that church life dead. Let me ask you, among you young people, do you have good kings who is willing to shepherd you, pay a price for your growth, to see you grow up? And are you a good judge to look at the sons who are younger than you, really willing to see them grow up? Do you have a lot speaking from the Lord, even through you? For the church in any locality, young people's work in any locality, or for Lord's testimony to be healthy, you must have, number one, priestly living. Number two, the kingship. Number three, the speaking of, of the prophets. Any one of the three is lacking, then I can assure you that church will become weak. So you need the three things.